hi everyone and happy Wednesday. Welcome to our first episode of the spring semester of the series of Art Up Close at the BCMA. We are excited you are here and joining us. Uh, my name is Claire. I'm a senior. I'm studying art history and economics and I am one of the student representatives for the Museum Advisory Committee. Uh, and I'm Lucy. I'm the other student representative for the Museum Advisory Committee. Uh, and I am a junior majoring in art history and government. And I'm really excited for today's presentation. Great. Thanks, Lucy. So this webinar is back for another semester. For those of you who are new to the series, Art Up Close is aimed at connecting students with specific pieces of um, art in the Bowdoin Museum collections. Um, each episode features a bite-sized presentation led by a Bowdoin student, an art history professor, a museum staff member, and in this case, one of the museum directors. We hope that you learned something new today, and we encourage you to ask questions in the chat after Anne's presentation. All five of the webinars that we've created for Art Up Close last semester are currently posted on the Bowdoin YouTube channel, so we will drop the link in the chat and you should definitely check them out. Yes, so today we are excited to welcome Anne Goodyear for depicting DeRay, the making of R. Luc Dubois' 32 questions for DeRay McKesson from 2016. Uh, Anne, Goodyear, uh, Anne Collins Goodyear, PhD, co-directs the Bowdoin College Museum of Art. Uh, she specializes in modern and contemporary art and has co-edited numerous publications about art topics. Um, and Goodyear is president of the Digital Art History Society and vice president of the National Committee of the History of Art. Goodyear also serves as a member of the editorial board of American Art and of the advisory committee for Virtual Asian American Art Museum. She is president emerita of CAA. Great, so we are so excited to welcome Anne. Um, we encourage our virtual audience to engage with Anne and ask questions um, as you hear her presentation. After she presents, we will moderate a Q&A session. Um, and please note that closed captioning is provided throughout. So with that, Anne, please take it away. Well, thank, thank you both so much, Lucy and Claire. Once again, good afternoon. And thank you so much, Lucy and Claire, for this opportunity to contribute to Art Up Close. I also want to express my warm appreciation to Elizabeth Humphrey, Manager of Student Programs and Curatorial Assistant at the Museum of Art for her support of this program. Today, it is my pleasure to speak, a word, to, speak to a work of time-based media art that was created for the Bowdoin College Museum of Art in 2016 by R. Luke Dubois, 32 Questions for DeRay McKesson. This piece was inspired by the exhibition, R. Luke Dubois Now, on view at the museum from March 31st until September 4th, 2016. The purpose of my presentation is to acquaint the Bowdoin community more fully with this innovative portrait, which provides insight into the personal and intellectual roots of McKesson's activism. In 32 questions for DeRay McKesson, the subject, a member of Bowdoin's class of 2007, describes his alma mater as a place where, and I quote, he fell in love with his mind. In the portrait, McKesson credits his work in Bowdoin student government by, for, with helping him to develop critical skills on which he would come to rely as an activist. He allows himself to be vulnerable, speaking in the 2016 piece to his parents' struggle with drug addiction, something that, as McKesson explains, allowed him to witness the capacity for recovery. Five years later, in the midst of a global pandemic, a major economic crisis, and a moment of national awakening, and a, and a moment of national awakening to the widespread implications of racism, his assertion of his belief in resilience both reflects his prescience and demonstrates the portrait's enduring power to inspire hope. Such forward-looking thinking comes as no surprise to those who know McKesson, including members of this audience. One of the founders of the Black Lives Matter movement, DeGray McKesson will be awarded an honorary degree by his alma mater in May. Originally called to a career in education, McKesson was working as senior director of human capital 
in the Minneapolis public schools in 2014 when he learned of the death of Michael Brown at the hands of police in Ferguson, in Ferguson, Missouri. Taking a leave of absence from his position, McKesson dedicated himself to protesting this act of violence and came to heed a new calling, that of political organizer, a pursuit he defines as dedicated to, and I quote, transforming an oppressive system or structure. In a sign of the remarkable impact he has had, McKesson was recently appointed director of the Council on Criminal Justice Task Force on Policing. A short biography about the activist posted on his webpage notes that he is, quote, focused primarily on issues of innovation, equity, and justice. McKesson's emphasis on innovation reflects his strategic use of social media to frame, communicate, and inspire support for the campaign to end systemic racism and police violence. As he noted in September 2015 at a talk given here at Bowdoin, and I quote, I fundamentally believe that the digital space has allowed us to think about what it means to organize, to create relationships that we can leverage to be power in new and fundamental ways. What does that mean? How do we continue to explore these new frontiers of what this social media space has allowed us to do? I have a large reach with Twitter. How do we use that to bring people together in new and powerful ways? That's a question we are still exploring. McKesson offered this insight as part of his reflection on a new way of organizing without traditional organizations. Indeed, part of McKesson's influence is no doubt due to, is, not, is no doubt due not so much to his allegiance to one institution, but rather to his ability to operate at the intersection of many disciplines, politics, education, activism, and organizing. Indeed, we might describe his successful career as quintessentially hybrid. The same might be said of the artist R. Luc Dubois, seen here tweaking his portrait of McKesson prior to the opening of Now. Like many contemporary visual artists, Dubois' work resists easy categorization, encompassing music, filmmaking, printmaking, collaborative performance, computer programming, and data mining. But perhaps somewhat unusual among visual artists, Dubois teaches engineering at NYU's Tandon School of Engineering, where he directs the Brooklyn Experimental Media Center. Keenly aware of our relationship to the numerous streams of data that surround us, Dubois considers how we make sense of and how, in the, how we make sense of it and how in the process we make sense of ourselves. He muses about his work, maybe it's art, it is definitely not science, it is possibly engineering, but it is what I, but this is what I do. This is working with information. This is working with data, but it is working with data in a framework where what I am ultimately trying to do is to bring the data back down to where it belongs, which is language, which is human, which is connection. That is where I land on all this stuff. Dubois' attention to the importance of connection echoes that of McKesson himself. And appropriately, this commitment is mirrored in the way in which the portrait is constructed. Building upon the format of the interview, highlighting a sense of interchange between the viewer and the sitter, Dubois asked McKesson to respond to 32 questions, each one of which is projected on the screen. No other voice is heard, however, disembodying the questions so that, subject to, so that the subjectivity of the questioner remains open and flexible. This astutely echoes the question's origins, for they were distilled from recommendations submitted by men and women from each of the classes resident at Bowdoin at the time the work was conceived, which is to say the classes of 2016, 17, 18, and 19, as reflected in this memo. 
Credit for the organizational effort behind this belongs to Daniel Mejia Cruz, class of 16, then president of the Bowdoin Student Government, and Ashley Bamboka, also of the class of 16, then president of the Bowdoin African American Society. These two student leaders had themselves publicly interviewed McKesson at Bowdoin the previous fall in September 2015, as seen here. The collection and submission of the questions on which the portrait is based through the efforts of BSG has particular conceptual elegance as McKesson himself served twice as president of Bowdoin student government, including once while serving as class president. The title of the document, Mejia Cruz and Bamboka sent to Dubois, questions for DeRay McKesson, may also suggest the root of the title of the work of art. 32 questions for DeRay McKesson captures his thoughtful replies to each query. And indeed, in capturing the sitter from multiple angles, moving as he thinks and crafts his answers, the time-based portrait conveys a sense of his intellectual intensity and personal energy. This sense of dynamism is heightened by another intriguing detail. As McKesson speaks, tags appear on the right. Developed by Dubois digital, after digitally segmenting the interview, the tags provide an index of subjects discussed by McKesson. Custom software created by the artist then prompts the scroll of tweets on related topics about at the left about which McKesson is tweeting. In this fashion then, the artwork thus connects McKesson's self-reflective responses to the 32 questions with issues addressed in real time by his Twitter feed. The portrait then not only captures McKesson visually in his signature blue Patagonia vest and shares his words, allowing him to reveal something about his background and personal and political commitments. It also reflects the link between words and actions in real time by interconnecting the interview with the activist's tool of choice for communicating with followers, Twitter. Perhaps most significantly, the portrait is generative, which is to say that the portrait does not form a repetitive loop but instead, when installed, continues to link to new tweets by McKesson. The portrait then will perpetually take on new life as McKesson continues to tweet, revealing new connections between his current activities and advocacy and the words he used to describe himself in 2016. According to Dubois, the McKesson portrait is something that I'm quite proud of because it explores a few strategies to keep a portrait relevant and current, but also to engage with the subject through multiple mediums at the same time. McKesson's words in his videotaped interview index his ongoing Twitter activity. That means that he is, even now, contributing to a real-time gloss on his own portrait as it plays on a screen in a gallery. Dubois's portrait then uses technology both to frame and to reveal something crucial about McKesson, his dedication to the use of new strategies of communication to reconceptualize activism for the 21st century by connecting and empowering individuals in new ways. We are grateful to the students at Bowdoin whose own insights are in turn reflected through the work. And we hope that this portrait will continue to inspire future generations just as its subject promises to do. Thank you. And I'd now like to share a short clip from Dray McKesson's uh, portrait uh, by Luc Dubois, 32 questions for Dray McKesson. I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a moment um, to enable me um, to share that portrait. Here we go. I love Bowdoin. Bowdoin's great. To be a home in all lands and all ages, to count nature, a familiar friend and art, intimate. What is it? I used to know the offer of the college. To be a home in all lands and all ages, to count nature, a familiar acquaintance and art, an intimate friend, 
to carry the keys of the world's library in your pocket, to build resources behind you, whatever task you undertake, to make hosts of friends, or to be leaders in all walks of life. This is the offer of the college. You know, think about the offer of the college often. It is um, and it's something that is so near and dear to me. I believe in the college's commitment to the common good. Um, and Bowdoin was you know, the first place I'd ever been that I thought was magical. Like it was, I, you know, I will always love the college. Uh, there was like this sense of magic at Bowdoin because uh, everybody like had a gift and, and, and like wanted to live in it. And I had never experienced that before. It was, uh, I often say that I like fell in love with my mind at Bowdoin and I did not know what that felt like until it happened. I like became a reader um, in a serious way. I was exposed to so many new thoughts, like my world open at both. Thank you so much for the opportunity to share uh, these thoughts about 32 questions of DeRay, uh, 32 questions for DeRay McKesson. And I now look forward to hearing your questions. And I also just wanna take this opportunity to remind the audience that Mr. McKesson will take part in a live conversation next Tuesday, the 23rd of February, organized by the Office of Development and Alumni Relations. I believe it's at 7 p.m., but you can double check that time as well as registering online. So thank you so much for your time and attention. And if there is an opportunity for questions and discussion, um, I'd be delighted. Yeah, thank you so much. That was fascinating to hear about and just to hear about how our Bowdoin experiences will, um, hopefully one day they'll inspire an art project or inspire, I don't know, some, some type of formal reflection. Um, so yeah, this is just a time for questions. We have about 10 minutes to take some questions and Anne can answer them. Um, we already have one question in the chat um, that I can just read off to you. Sure. Uh, so our first question is, it's been five years since this work was created. How has your understanding of the work changed since, since its inaugural presentation in 2016? I think that's, that's a wonderful question. And it's been very exciting to have an opportunity to um, reflect back on it. And I think the thing that is um, most obvious to me now um, given everything that's happened in the five years since um, McKesson made the portrait is just how prescient his thinking um, has proved to be. And it's interesting that when he filmed this and the filming was actually just about exactly five years ago from today, it happened in February of 2015. And I realized that we were at that point on the eve of a previous presidential election um, that's something else that McKesson actually reflects on a little bit in the portrait. And so um, it, it, uh, we've had, I think we've lived through a watershed moment in human history um, during, during that, that interval. And some of the um, activism that he um, was committing himself to, the important work he was already doing to build the Black Lives uh, Matter movement, I think has proven to be extremely forward thinking. And uh, the words that he used five years ago continue to, to sound extremely relevant to current events. So um, I love the portrait when it debuted. I thought it was a very exciting way to um, reflect upon the achievements of a recent Bowdoin alumnus. And now looking back upon it, I um, really understand it as a way to um, sort of enshrine the um, thinking of somebody who has already proven to be a transformative force in American politics and um, American activism. So I feel very proud to have this portrait. Um, I also am really deeply touched by the degree to which McKesson reflects in the portrait about the importance of this community to him. And it's been sort of thrilling to see the way in which um, that strong connection that he feels to Bowdoin has also continued to play out over the past five years. And um, I find it really thrilling that he'll be receiving um, an honorary doctorate this coming May. And one of the things we do look forward to doing, and we'll have to think about how to make that possible um, while the museum is, is currently um, operating under unusual um, circumstances given the pandemic. But 
I do hope we can get it installed so that people can have the pleasure, um, not simply of seeing an archived piece, which is what I was sharing with you today, but actually seeing the piece in real time, continuing to reference um, his ongoing tweets. And I was sort of struck by the fact that back in 2015, when he talked about his tweets uh, and, and Twitter feed, he had 200,000 followers. He now has over a million. So certainly his, his megaphone is getting even bigger. Wow, that is really fascinating, especially the growth in his um, popularity and face. Well, thank you for sharing that. And one of the question that, questions that's popped up is about how special this piece is. Um, and we have a question about, can you speak to whether this portrait is one of the kind? Are there other time-based media portraits like the one Dubois made? Oh, thank you. I think that's a really um, important question. So um, very specifically, I'll say that this, that our portrait is one of three, I believe. It's an addition of three. Um, I mentioned that um, among other, um, other media in which uh, Luke works, um, he works in printmaking. Um, that is, and like photography, sort of a, um, a uh, um, medium that, that um, is, uh, Sort of consists of multiples and the same is generally true for time-based media art so this is one of three um, this is a piece that luc dubois chose to make for bowden um, we were absolutely thrilled um, when luc suggested creating a portrait of um deray mckesson and one of the ways in which um it worked for the artist was to do it um as a multiple so um you know we anticipate um that in the fullness of time, there will be opportunities to see this portrait um, in other collections, but needless to say, it, it retains a very special connection here. Interestingly enough, um, I've known Luc Dubois for a number of years, and when I was at the National Portrait Gallery, one of the last projects I worked on was a portrait that Luc Dubois did of Sergey Brin and Larry Page, who are the two co-founders of Google. And Interestingly enough, um, I know from having worked with Luke um, when he was doing that piece and from it having worked with Luke when he was doing this piece, that there were lessons that he learned and ideas that he was shaping um, when he was working earlier with, with um, developing like the portraits of, of um, Paige and Bryn that he was able to apply in this instance. So um, in terms of being an art form, it's something that Luke is developing in different ways in his practice. And there are other artists, um, an artist by the name of Lincoln Schatz comes to mind immediately, who have also experimented with this generative form of portraiture, which is to say creating pieces that um, are not necessarily fixed in time, but which actually use time um, as a medium to continue to develop the very content of the portrait um, through the way in which software is, is downloading data streams, and in this case, of course, Twitter. Very interesting. I think that the Twitter feed really adds an interesting component to this piece. Um, I'm curious to know if you know McKesson's reaction to this portrait. No, not yet. Um, we did, of course, reach out to him um, at the time that the piece was um, created. Needless to say, he is um, an exceptionally um, busy and, and committed person. And interestingly enough, um, at the time we made the portrait back in February of 2015, he was actually running um, to be mayor of Baltimore. And so he was especially busy at that moment in time. Um, so I have not yet had an opportunity to meet DeRay McKesson personally. Um, I, I feel like I know him <laughs> because I've spent a lot of time with his, with his portrait and I've had an opportunity to see him speak in other contexts. Um, he also, of course, uh, does a podcast, Pod Save the People, and has recently published a book about his um, activism in Black Lives Matter. But I have not yet had an opportunity to speak with him about his reaction to the portrait. I hope that perhaps at some point in time, it will be possible for us to do a program in which we bring DeRay and Luc Dubois back together so that we can hear a little bit more about what it was like to make the piece. And I would especially like to hear um, something of DeRay's uh, reactions to the types of questions that the Bowdoin student body was asking. And of course, that really is um, an incredibly important part of this piece. Absolutely. I think as a student, it's really special to 
see a piece of art where students have, are involved in the process of making. Absolutely. Thank you for that. Yeah, so um, I think that's all the questions we have. Okay. Um, unless you have, do you have any final thoughts that you want to say um, before we before we call it? Thank you so much, um, Lucy and Claire. Uh, I appreciate that. Uh, something that I do want people to know is if that if they would like to spend more time um, with a reproduction, a time-based reproduction of the portrait, um, I would urge you to check out Luc Dubois' website, and you can just find it by typing Dubois, um, Luc Dubois into your browser, and even just Luc Dubois into Ray McKesson, and you will find uh, the video documentation uh, of the piece um, at present. Um, our uh, collections management system at the museum um, allows us to share stills of the piece, but we're not yet able to show um, the, a time-based representation. So I'll direct you to Luke's website for that. One thing I will point out is that Luke's website features um, an archival version. So you'll see that the tweets, I think, date back to, to 2015 or so when the piece was, or maybe 2016 as the piece was being um, made and launched originally. So um, stay tuned. We look forward to getting the piece reinstalled and giving people an opportunity to see um, how what he was thinking about and discussing back in 2016 continues um, to resonate with messages that he's sharing with his followers today. Wonderful, thank you. Um, yeah, so, and if anyone has any questions, feel free to reach out um, to- By all means. Any of the presenters or any of the people on the panel. Um, and thank Absolutely. you all, have a great, Thank you, Anne, so much for thank you. talking to us about this, for giving us your time to talk about something that's really important to the college and to the museum. Um, and yeah, I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you both for the opportunity. And Elizabeth, thank you so much for all you've done to make this possible. And thanks to everybody in the audience who was able to join yeah. us today. Take care.